Welcome back, it's nice to see you again. Today is the Photomator update that I think a lot of pros have been waiting for. And the really cool thing is they are releasing it today as part of an early access beta. So what that means is if you play with this and you find something that's still not quite meeting your workflow or it's missing an integration that you need, it's a good time to send the team feedback directly or let me know in the comments below and I can aggregate that and forward it along. And so for me, today's update addresses one of the biggest issues I've had since day one, and that was photos for a project or a professional shoot mingling with my Apple Photos library, which I just can't have. And so today I finally get to show you how they've solved this problem. Before we jump in, make sure you stick around to the end. There is a setting you'll wanna make sure you're aware of before you start using these features. All right, let's go. So let's take a look at the Photometer interface that you're used to. This is a recent trip that I took to Cologne, Germany, the beautiful Cologne Cathedral. And if you didn't know better, I wouldn't blame you for thinking this was the Apple Photos app. In fact, if I switch over to Apple Photos, probably the only thing you're going to notice different really is that it has some videos in it, but it's almost identical and that's on purpose. They're pulling from the same photo library and they're intended to be this seamless experience. So what Photomator has introduced that exponentially increases its use cases is under this drop down here with this new files option. What we can do now is we can source our photos from anywhere. They don't have to be from the Apple Photos library. So for example, I can come in here and import from my iCloud Drive. That means these are being synced via iCloud Drive and not part of my Apple Photos library. And it pulls in these photos just like they would in a normal Photometer workflow. So that means that I can have photos that are stored other places besides Apple Photos, and I can come in and make normal edits to them. So in this case, these are a bunch of old family photos that I recently had scanned, and I wanna make them look new and exciting. Maybe we'll even publish these in like a family photo book. And with just a couple quick edits, I've got something that looks really nice. And the great thing is, I can just save it like I would any other edit. Now I can even copy these adjustments, and I can find other similar photos, and I can come up here and do paste adjustments. And so now I've got this great workflow that's awesome for anything that I don't want cluttering up my Apple Photos library. So that could be a professional shoot, this could be old family photos, whatever it is, you now have this option available to you. And what's really powerful is they don't all have to come from a single source. So if I come up here to the plus, I can actually navigate to my Dropbox or desktop or even plug in an external hard drive. And I can pick the photos file that I want it to use and it pops it right in here, just like it's part of my Photomator library. Now, there's one thing you'll wanna be aware of if you're using this new Photomator option, is that we have a new setting available to us. This setting is off by default and it makes it so that we're using non-destructive workflows. Now, if you want to know what non-destructive workflows mean and why Pixelmator and Photomator are famous for them, you can check out my masterclass that's going on right now and I can link that in the description below. But basically, while this is unchecked, it stops it from messing with the original photos. So you can always revert them back to the original, which for a family history archive like this, I wanna keep the originals around. I don't want them all necessarily to be updated with my edits. So that's the update. Let me know what you think about these new features in the comments below because me personally, I'm very excited to start storing my photos on hard drives or in Dropbox and still be able to use Photomator to make my edits, especially in batch. And I specifically wanna hear from all the pros out there. If there's something still missing that you absolutely need to make Photomator your go-to tool for your professional shoots, let me know. I wanna pass the feedback along. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.